Rampage of the Super Warriors was released in August 2004. This set focused on cards that manipulate the mana and shield zones, as well as cards that benefit from playing a deck containing cards of just one civilization. Notable cards in this set include Sniper Mosquito, Emerald, Searing Wave, and Mana Nexus. In this series, both Michael Schwartz and myself will be opening 24 booster packs, or one box, of a core Duel Masters booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each new episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released, moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of the episode. This is the Duel Masters Progression Series. Hello everyone, we're back with episode 3 of the Duel Masters Progression Series, and this week we're actually the ones who get to spin the winner's wheel here. And let me tell you, this feels absolutely amazing. Not only because of the fact that just we, this means we won last week, but also somehow in the process, we've managed to keep Ben on only a single copy of Core Isle for the entire rest of the progression series. I think this is going to have some huge implications going forward. Uh, for now, it just means we get to spin this winner's wheel, so let's get right into that. Uh, what we're really hoping to see here is either super rare, rare, or just the packs. The very rares in this set, it turns out, are uh, not very good. So we'll give this wheel here several spins, and uh, let's see where it ends up. Not common. Oh, no. So, because of our spin on the wheel, we get to take any common from Evo Crushinators of Doom and add it to our collection. Unfortunately, it turns out we pulled play sets of almost every common in this entire set. However, there is one common which we did not manage to get four copies of in our pack opening. And what is that common, you might ask? Well, if we scroll down here, we're just gonna click on it right here. It's this guy, Scissor Eye. And there it is, uh, feel free to bask in its glory. It's a 4 mana 3000 Gelfish. Um, if you're wondering if Gelfish is relevant, it's not. Um, so yeah, th this is what we've got now. Rampage of the Super Warriors is the next set that we will be opening. But to be honest, I don't think it changes very much. All the super rares in this set are pretty much just giant beat sticks that don't do a whole lot of anything. The very rares are evo lines from a little bit less used of races, so I don't even know if we're going to be able to play them even if we pull them. Uh, we're looking at like Sieg Velicula the Intense and Initiate Evo, probably playable. It's not bad. Blue gives us access to Emerald, which is pretty nice in control decks and in aggro decks. Setting up your shield zone is going to be pretty clutch in this series because we don't really have ways to go through shields without uh, actually breaking them right now. Angler Cluster is a good blocker if you're playing mono blue. Uh, Darkness, we get Jack Viper, Shadow of Doom is another evil. It's not that interesting. Snake Attack is kind of a neat option that could be used to catch somebody off guard. Each of your creatures in the battle zone gets double breaker until the end of the turn at the cost of one of your own shields. It's a pretty powerful spell, but will it see play? I'm not really sure. Fire does give us access to a few interesting cards. We get Searing Wave, which is pretty darn good in almost any deck with fire. Uber Dragon Jabaha, I doubt we'll ever see any play because we do not have too many good armored dragons at our disposal right now. Nature does give us access to Mana Nexus, which is pretty sweet. Get an extra card from your mana zone to your shields. But outside of that, it's not a very exciting set. I don't think it's going to change today's episode very much, but let's jump in and open those packs. For the most part, really what we're looking for from this set is all at the common and uncommon slot. I think the two strongest cards in this set by far are Emerald and Searing Wave, so we're really looking to pull play sets of that. All right, pack one. We get the Emerald, all right, but what I want to talk about is Snip Striker Bull Razor. This card is kind of overlooked because it looks like just a two cost 3000 vanilla, but it's actually quite strong. It's gonna go over Meteosaur, it's gonna go over Crimson Hammer, and it's just a nuisance on turn two. I'm gonna be playing an aggro deck, assuming I can pull the right cards today, and Snip Striker Bull Razor is gonna be one of the keys to pulling it off successfully. 
Okay, and now we have our first unplayable very rare. We have this awful giant insect evolution here that is never going to see the light of day. We do have Sniper Mosquito on the top here though, which is, it's really only significant because it's a one drop, but it's good for aggressive decks. Okay, we got the first very rare. It's Sea Egg Bellicula the Intense. It's not a bad one. I don't mind picking that up for sure, but will I be using it in the near future? I'm kind of thinking no. However, I am looking at Sniper Mosquito. That is going to be another important one in today's hopeful aggro build. <laughs> okay, we have Legendary Bynor in this pack here. Uh, for the most part, this is another unplayable, very rare evolution, but for whatever reason, I've always liked this card, uh, so I'm really glad to see it here. There's also, honestly, a part of me that just wants to troll Ben by playing Leviathans and see if we can pull out a win anyways. We're probably not going to go that route, but uh, <laughs> I kind of want to. Oh my god, two in a row? Seeing Bellicula the Intense? Are we going to make an Initiate deck? Are we going to get some blockers in the battle zone? It would be funny. It would be funny. This is actually one of the rares I was keeping a bit of an eye on. Psychic Shaper in the bottom right here. So this effect here is extremely powerful, however again you really have to be all or almost all water to take advantage of it, and mono water just isn't very good. I, I've got it in the back of my head that maybe we want to find a way to use this, uh, probably not, but we'll see what happens. We also have the first copy of Searing Wave, which is just probably the most powerful board wipe we'll ever have, so it's great to see the first of those. Scratch Claw, I don't care, but Searing Wave, we're gonna wanna pick up a lot of those. We wanna get a play set for the future. <laughs> and finally, we have the first unplayable super rare here. We have Guriel Ghastly Warrior. Really, this is just a vanilla creature and vanilla creatures suck. Oh, a super rare, Chaos Fish. This card is straight trash. He's of 1,000 power for seven mana. It's so slow, it's turn seven. You need to be doing something better by turn seven. Get him out of here. I, th I think this is actually our first copy of Emerald here, so I'm glad that we have at least one of those here. Um, Emerald's just a really solid card, so really glad we have one of those here. Oh my god, two supers in a row. Okay, this pull is Earth Stomp Giant. You know, he's not bad. Uh, he's pretty bad, I'm not going to lie to you. Whenever he attacks, return all creatures from your mana zone to your hand. There might be a funny build with it, but other than that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to ever use him. And we have Gargako Dragon in the super rare slot here. Um, again, this is total trash, but it looks cool, I guess. Uh, okay, second copy of Searing Wave, not bad. That's what I really want to be seeing here. Gigamantis. All right, I'm pulling a decent amount of very rares, but not the one that I wanted. I want the darkness one. I don't want Gigamantis. Put on a giant insect whenever one of your nature creatures would be put into the graveyard from the battle zone. Put it into your mana zone instead. That's not very great. Legendary Binor, why am I getting so much trash? Uh, the second Gargako Dragon, uh, does the fact that we have two of these matter? No, but we have it. Uh, okay, and there's the fourth Psychic Shaper. Um, I don't really think we're going to be using it, but it's nice to keep that in mind. No! Why do I get two supers when it's a garbage? It's trash! Maybe I'll make an Earth Stomp Giant deck just because it'll be funny, but I, I do not think so. Uh, okay, so on pack 18 here, we finally have our second Emerald. Um, we really want to see some more of those and the Searing Waves. Uh, we also have a very rare Jack Viper Shadow of Doom. Um, this is a Ghost Evolution, and I, this might be one of the more playable Hollows from this set. Really don't think it's worth it, but it, it's a decent pull. Okay, third copy of Emerald, if I've been counting correctly, and the fifth Psychic Shaper. The the universe is really trying to tell me to go mono water here. All right, we got an Emerald playset, nice to see. Nothing exciting, nothing exciting, nothing exciting. That's the thing about this set. It's just another Gigamantis, woohoo! Uh, and the second legendary Binor. Um, we're probably not playing this either, but I really love the fact that we have two of it. Uh, we also have another copy of Searing Wave, which is great. Okay, another Jack Viper. Um, don't really care about that. Uh, but so now we're moving on to the final two packs here. I don't actually think we have the playset of Emerald or Searing Wave yet, which is quite unfortunate. 
But uh, I, let's just move into the last two packs and see what happens. Uh, okay, nothing in this pack. And the final pack? Oh, uh, we do have Searing Wave. I think that completes the playset if we didn't have it before. I don't know about Emerald. I hope we just missed one. We actually have four. Last pack magic? No, okay. I mean, we couldn't expect that much from this set. I wanted to see some of the darkness ghost evo, but I get two Earth Stomp Giants instead. Whatever, I don't care. Let's let's uh, let's put this into OCTGN and see what we come up with. Okay, so here's the deck we're taking to today's episode. What we've got today is a Water Darkness Tempo deck, and really this deck is built around this card's Snake Attack from the most recent set. I've got it up on the screen here, but just what it does, it's a 4 mana spell and it gives all our creatures double breaker until the end of the turn. So obviously on the right board states, this is an extremely powerful effect, and we've built our deck in a way to really try and maximize the potential of this card right here. So what our overall game plan is, early in the game it's pretty simple. We just want to flood the board with creatures and then play snake attack. And then with that, out of nowhere, we'll just be able to swing with all our creatures and break all or almost all of Ben's shields. In an ideal world, maybe we just, we have enough to end the game immediately with one snake attack, which would be great. But even if we can't, so then we can pivot to sort of a plan B. So this deck also runs a ton of card draw, which is nice because even if we go all in on one snake attack, we can still use all this card draw to refuel our resources, draw into more threats, and basically just ensure that the gears of the deck keep spinning. Either we draw enough creatures to flood the board again, and just push in the final few attacks. Or we can draw into one of our Liquid People evolutions, which are just really difficult to deal with in general because of how they interact, or, or I guess rather how they don't interact with blockers. So that's the game plan. I guess now let's just go into the card by card. First we have 4 Marrow Ooze the Twister. This is actually a card from Evo Crushinators of Doom that neither of us got to showcase in the most recent episode. First, it's just a one-drop creature that can attack, which I believe this is actually the only option we have that can do that in these two civilizations right now. Uh, it's also a blocker, which is quite nice if Ben is on some aggressive strategy. Uh, next, we have three Emerald. It's a two-drop aggressive creature, which is great for our deck. It also lets us basically rig our shields with shield triggers, which is phenomenal. And even if we don't have a shield trigger to put into our shield zone, we can just throw away our worst card and pick up something else, and we can use this as like a looting type effect, basically. It's also a Cyber Lord, which is great for this deck because we are also on the Illusionary Merfolk plan again. And so the fact that we have more than just Core Isle is really useful here. Next, we have two Aqua Vehicle. This is just a cheap Liquid People. Nothing much more to say there. Uh, lastly, in the two drop creature slot, we have two Writhing Bone Ghoul. Uh, we would probably rather this was either Emerald or Aqua Vehicle, but actually we're already maxed out on all the copies of those cards that we pulled. But we did still want a few more 2-drop creatures, and so we filled out the rest with this. Next we have 4 Spiral Gate. This is really good in this deck, so first off it's just a shield trigger and one of the only ones we have access to in Water and Darkness. It's also just really good to just hard cast this in this deck. For example, maybe like turn 5 or something, we play some creature and Spiral Gate one of Ben's creatures and then that's just a huge tempo swing in our favor. Uh, next we have 4 Aqua Hulkus, I don't think we need to say anything more about this card. Next we have 2 Horrid Worm, and I'm actually going to talk about this in tandem with this one of Hyper Squid Walter here. Uh, so what both of these cards are, these are three drop creatures that have some on attack effect basically. In Horrid Worm's case, it discards a card out of our opponent's hand, and in Hyper Squid Walter's case, it draws us a card. So really, what role these play in this deck? So if you think about Snake Attack, which again is sort of the key card in our deck, this card is at its best when our opponent has four shields. Because say our opponent has four shields and we have like three creatures, we can use that to arrange lethal. Really, I, I guess maybe the way to think about it is because it's giving all our creatures double breaker, it's best when our opponent has an even number of shields, so this can take the maximum use out of that. So what Horrid Worm and Hyper Squid Walter can do, since Ben starts with five shields, this can maybe give us a way to poke one shield and try and make our snake attack as good as possible, but we can also do that while maintaining card parity basically, right? 
because even though we're giving Ben an extra resource from breaking the shield, uh, in Hyper Squid Walter's case, we'll also draw a card, or in Horrid Worm, we'll be eating a card out of Ben's hand. Hyper Squid Walter also happens to be a Cyberlord, which is quite nice again because it pairs with Merfolk. Lastly, in the three drop slot, we have one Aqua Soldier, and we only have one of this card, which is quite unfortunate. But this is just a three drop Liquid People that when it's destroyed, it's returned to our hand instead. And so this is just a Liquid People that's impossible for Ben to deal with permanently. Next, we have three Snake Attack. I think I've already said why we're running this card. Next, this is actually a card from the most recent set also we have two baraga blade of gloom uh so this is basically in here as like pseudo card draw it's a bit unfortunate if ben is on aggressive strategies because the way we draw cards is by destroying our shields but uh if ben's on a slower deck then the downside of that won't matter so much and we can basically just use this as another way to draw cards it's also 4000 power which means it dodges searing wave which is quite nice uh, next we have one Crystal Paladin, just a really solid finisher. Four Corile, we already saw these in full force last episode. Three Illusionary Merfolk, we already saw this last episode also, but I do just want to highlight, really this deck needs a way to ensure that the cards keep flowing, especially because we're giving Ben more and more resources when we're trying to be aggressive. And so this is really, I think, important because it's what lets us keep up with that. So this just ensures that we keep drawing more and more cards and can find some way to close out the game. Uh, and then lastly, we have two Crystal Lancer and two Terror Pit. That's the deck. Uh, I'm actually really excited to see how this deck performs today. I can't remember, at least personally, ever seeing or playing a deck like this. But in theory, it seems like it should be good. And when I was testing it, drawing like practice hands, I think it has the potential to be quite powerful. This is the deck that I will be bringing to today's duel. I'm going to call this Mono Nature Beats. And this might be the weirdest deck you'll ever see me be playing. But hear me out. Let me try to defend this. First of all, this is Rampage of the Super Warriors. There are absolutely no good cards that I feel like I'm going to miss out on if I don't win that wheel spin today. Second of all, I can't keep up with Michael in a control mirror right now because he has much better removal options, sense of three more core aisles, one more terror pit. I can't deal with that in the late game very consistently, so I need to come up with something aggressive that's able to win before that late game comes into play. So I wanted to build something rush oriented. However, because this is also Rampage of the Super Warriors, Searing Wave is a card now, and Searing Wave completely annihilated any just like low one to two mana like fast stuff i felt like i needed to be a little bit faster and use speed attackers but speed attackers don't exist yet so that's not an option for me so i started to look for something that has like a really powerful mid game so i can just get really quick shields and then start putting threats on the board in the mid game that he just can't deal with before i end the game and i came up with mono nature beats let me go through the card by card and explain this monstrosity of a deck to you. First of all, we're going to be playing four copies of Sniper Mosquito. Sniper Mosquito is a one drop, so it hits the board early, gets in, hits a lot of shields, and it has the drawback that every time it attacks, you have to return a card from your mana zone to your hand. However, I think this can actually be an asset because a lot of times I don't have like the draw power that Water has or like with Magris with Light, I can't draw cards. So this is going to help me get cards back to my hand that I can then use to keep putting pressure on Michael. Four copies of Burning Mane, I wanted more low, like, two drop attackers. I thought about using Essence Elf, but I'm not really playing that many spells in this deck, and I felt like the 1000 extra power was a little bit more important. On top of that, just by playing Burning Mane, I feel like he's going to think that I'm on Bark Whips, and might start using Crimson Hammers to kill off the Burning Manes, when in reality he should be going for my Sniper Mosquitoes, or my Sword Butterflies. Also in the two drop section, I have Poisonous Mushroom, help me get some extra mana early. And on top of that, it follows up a turn one Sniper Mosquito perfectly because I won't lose out on my mana progression because I'll have turn one, summon Sniper Mosquito, turn two, Poisonous Mushroom, get one more mana. I'm at three mana now. And after my Sniper Mosquito attacks, I'm still at two and keeping pace with Michael. Four copies of Sword Butterfly. Sword Butterfly is the next best giant insect in the game. At only three mana, it goes up to 5,000 power when it attacks, which is huge because this is going to get right over Bloody Squido. It's going to get over Hunterfish, and that's all the blockers that Michael has available pretty much. Four copies of Bronze Arm Tribe just to help accelerate the mana curve, and four copies of Forest Hornet. 
Forest Hornet is kind of weird. I thought it was bad at first, but after some playtesting, I think it's a key card in this deck. At 4,000 power, it gets over all forms of mass removal, and if he wants to waste a Death Smoke on this, that's just a win in my book. If he wastes his removal on my stupid four cost, I don't care. It's a win for me. And also, it's just hard to deal with. He has to waste the big removal on it. Two copies of Gigamantis. It's all I pulled. If I had more, I might be playing more. 5,000 power is, again, a pretty good key metric to hit because I'm going to go over all of his blockers. And it's got a nice extra effect where when my creatures die, they go to my mana zone, which will let me have a chance to get them back with Sniper Mosquito attacks. One copy of Rumbling Terrorhorn. I wish I had more. Super good card. Card, search your deck, get something good, play it the next turn. And here is where the deck really shines, the seven beaters. We've got four copies of Raging Dashhorn. When you're playing a mono nature deck, this is essentially a five cost 7,000 double breaker. And that is just rough to deal with. He's gonna have to waste one of his two terror pits or like his death smokes just to get rid of it. But there's so many of them, they just keep coming back. On top of Raging Dashhorn, I'm running my two copies of Earth Stomp Giant. This has the drawback that when it attacks, it returns all creatures from your mana zone to your hand, but actually this can be really clutch because it's going to help me get more things that I can summon and put on the board to keep attacking with. I run out of cards really fast, I just run out of steam in this deck, so having those options of being able to get stuff from my mana zone back is really key, and 8000 power is just pretty cracked for turn 5. And my final beater is Deathblade Beetle, which is clearly the worst of the bunch. It's only a power attacker, so it actually is going to be killed by Searing Wave, which actually really kind of sucks. But it's a double breaker at 5 mana, and it might force him to play a Death Smoke or something on it. On top of that, we have 3 copies of Dimension Gate, which is going to just help us search out our beaters, essentially. To round out my spell lineup, I have 4 copies of Mana Nexus. I don't think this is going to be very useful in a control ma matchup, because by the time he's hitting my shields, I've already lost the game. However, in the event that he does play like a tempo or aggro deck, this will give me a chance to stay in the game. And of course, one copy of Natural Snare. Unfortunately, it's my only form of hard removal in the deck, but it's the only option I have. I think if I'm getting to the point where there's stuff I really want to be like using target removal on, again, I've probably lost the game at that point already anyways, so I'm not too fussed about it. Overall, this might be the weirdest deck I'll ever play, but I really hope it works, just for the sheer fact that it'll be hilarious if I do. If I can win with Earth Stomp Giant, it's just going to be... It'll be golden. Just just watch it. Watch me win with our Stomp Giant. I'm going to try it. I'm super excited. It's time to duel. Let's get it. All right, Michael, welcome to episode three. Are you ready for this week? Uh... <laughs> I don't know about that. Ready as I'll ever be. I'm really <laughs> that, excited. We'll see for how real. it goes. That's the same way I feel. I hope this goes okay. We're gonna we're gonna see what happens. I I don't think there was that much good in this set, but I feel like the number of cards that are new that are impactful was very little. But at the same time, they can make like a huge difference in some decks. All right. Well, are you ready to just jump into this game? I'm ready. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Let's roll the dice. High roll can choose first or second. Three, two, one, roll. Oh, oh my oh. god, let's go. <laughs> this is cheap. Okay. 20 to 19. I am thinking about this because as you can see, you are on a 40 card deck and I am on a 40 <laughs> card deck, which makes leads me to believe you might be on something a little bit more aggressive and maybe you want to go first. So I have to maybe decide I'm, if I want to go first I'm or second. Maybe I'm playing control again, and I just have no fear of deck out after almost losing to deck out three times <laughs> in a row. Yeah, I'm that, not. That so, I'm, could be what's going on here. You I'm not convinced. Know. All right, I'm gonna play first. You're going first, okay? All right, I set up the battle zone. I'm, I'm ready. actually gonna play a new card to mana for turn one. All right, all right. Let's what do you think it is? is. What do you, guess, guess what it is. Part of me hopes we're on a, like a mirror match right now. Uh, I'll, I'll guess Mana Nexus, I guess. The God. Oh Michael the God, God, Schwartz. I am the God. Okay. <laughs> Go I ahead, go. it's your turn. I'm not going to play a new a new card to Mana, but I'm going to play a card that's new to the progression series. Okay. Uh, not So for, first we'll charge Mana, that's not the new. Oh, that's... Then we're gonna play Marrow Ooze Ooh, the Twister. Okay, okay, I see how this is. 
Oh, this is going to be an interesting one. Go. This is this episode is going to be wild. That's all I'm going to say right now. <laughs> all right, Holy all right. shit. Okay. Oh my god. What am I about to do? I'm just going to like your mind is going to get melted in a second here once I figure out how to oh do this properly. Gosh. Okay, you have Mero Ooze the Twister. There's no Evos on that. Okay, I don't have to worry about anything weird. But that puts me that you're on some kind of like obvious aggro rush kind of build. So I have to think what I want to play. Are you ready? I don't think you're ready for what's about to happen. Oh no. Your, your, no, your no, brain is just going to explode. Alright, alright. Let's see what you've got for me. I'm going to play you know? Burning okay. Mains Mana. Alright. Okay. I'm going to summon Poisonous Mushroom. Okay. One of my builds, I was thinking about playing this. I only have like one of this card. Yeah, but you thought that this <laughs> looks pretty normal, right? So Are far, you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? This is... Earthst. <laughs> okay, I did not see that one coming. I will say And that. I'll play Sniper Mosquito. <laughs> okay, okay. I respect it. And I will end my turn there. I will say, so like during my pack opening, when I actually read Earth Stomp Giant, I was thinking like, low key, this might be better than we gave it credit for when we were playing back whenever this was a thing. Oh yeah, dude, Earth Stomp Giant, he's, he's big. Anyway, yeah, okay, my go. Yep. This is a tricky one. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're just looking at my card pool and you're just wondering what the heck is happening right now. Yeah. And I'm sort of looking at your card pool and thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to charge mana here. All right, all right. We're going to run out Writhing Bone Ghoul, <laughs> and then we're going to pass the turn back to you. All right. <laughs> I will say, not in a million years a week ago did I think the next episode would begin turn two with... Sniper, Mosquito, Poisonous Mushroom, Marrow Ooze, The Twister, and Writhing Bone Cool. Oh, oh no, dude, the viewers think we're like idiots right now. Uh, okay. Well, at least I might be, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we both have a 2k and a 1k. It's kind of a game of chicken right now. Who's gonna make the first move? And I feel like I want to do something else, but if I don't get Kraken, then your guys are about to get snacking. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So... Um, we'll just pretend I know what you're saying, sure. I'll put the Dimension Gate to mana, because that feels too slow right now. <laughs> and I'm gonna tap one mana for a second copy of Sniper Mosquito. Okay, you're off to the races here. Um, now, I can attack with the Sniper Mosquito, and then I can get something from my mana zone back, so I have something to play. That'll probably cost the life of my Sniper Mosquito. And it would put me behind on a mana. Is it worth it? It would give you stuff too. I'm gonna pass here. All right. I can't imagine what you're gonna do to me with three mana. That's too scary. This is tough, actually. Well, I've got one card in my head that's like super sketchy in this matchup, but also potentially useful. And I don't know if I like- Oh. Uh, okay, I think we just throw it to mana. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, I'm very uh, I, curious. I bet this is also not a card you expected to see from oh, me no. today. Oh, we're, we're going to throw Baraga Blade of Gloom. Oh! To no, he's not bad. He is not bad. I actually, I dig it. And then we're it's, just I mean, it's technically, it's draw. Yeah, exactly. But, but <laughs> do you want to take this... one of your shields when you're facing Sniper yeah. Mosquitoes? I doubt no, it. No, I, I really, really don't. But it can, like, swing over your Sniper also. That's what I wasn't sure okay. about. Anyway, we'll run out another Bone Ghoul and then pass match the my two K. Yeah, match my 2k power. I will draw. That's interesting. Um, we are gonna pay three mana for Sword of Butterfly, another okay. new card. Oh my gosh, are you on the Giga Mantis? Do you realize how strong this thing gets? It's, it gets to 5,000. It gets to 5,000. I'm gonna tap Sniper Mosquito and I'm gonna hit a shield. And I am going to add, I think I'm just going to add Burning Main back to my hand. Keep this. All right. That's good. I'm trying to figure out how to move it to my hand. Move to hand. There we go. And I will end my turn there. Okay. Now, Writhing Bone Ghoul is also a living dead. So there's not Evos threatening me there. Is there ever a living dead Evo? I don't, I don't think there is. 
I don't know. The, I'm not running while well, there are no living dead emotes now for sure. Yeah, right now there's not. God, this is still, I have no idea what I should be doing right now. <laughs> My deck is just giving you a head scratcher. You've got one in hand and it's just burning, man. So like, yeah. I don't think you can kill me. Well, I guess if you, or no, you don't even have the mana to evo it. Right. Unless you want to hit some shields and give me the mana. You know what? I, I know no fear. We're going to send Spiral Gate to mana. Okay. Step two for Aqua Vehicle, and then yep. pass the turn back to you. All right. I will draw. Uh, Natural Snare to mana, and we're going to tap two for the Burning Main. Um, all right, Aqua Vehicle. So obviously you're going to be on Crystal Lancer. You're probably going to be on the Paladin. Uh, my guys are stronger than yours for the most part. Yeah, I'm going to swing with Sword butterfly and break a shield all right that's good okay now i will swig with sniper mosquito and hit a shield and i'm gonna take back the mana nexus all right i'm gonna you do have one blocker i will swing with sniper mosquito and i'll take back dimension gate right and screw it we'll do it the last one poison mushroom will go in uh so this one i'm think i want to Block. Yeah, this one we're gonna block. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of what I figured. And it's your go. <laughs> right. Don't think I'm gonna be needing Hyper Squid Walter anytime soon. No, I, that's probably a little bit too slow for this situation. <laughs> yeah. What did you, you took to hand Dimension Gate and Mana Nexus, right? Yeah, Dimension Gate, Mana Nexus. We're Five. going to. Okay. Four Isle Burning Man. Yep. That makes and sense to me. Swing these two guys into Sword Butterfly and one of the Sniper Mosquitoes. Yep. And yeah, okay, so they both trade, and now it's your go. All right, untap, draw a card. Oh, I wonder what I drew. Could be anything. You're sitting on a four card hand. I'll play the Dimension Gate to mana. I'm not really afraid of that much. I could break you down to the last shield. Well, I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna put out the Burning Main, and now I have to think about if I want to swing with Sniper Mosquito or not. <laughs> if I don't, I'm giving you time to do something else. But what are you gonna do to it? Like, Core Isle number two, maybe? There is also Crystal Lancer is a thing, but, or if I attack, you could Evo into Paladin and Spiral Gate or something like that. You know what? I'm just gonna get you down to no shields while I can. I'm gonna swing with Sniper Mosquito, and I'm taking back Dimension Gate once again. All right, uh, that's good. All right, go ahead. Make you have right. to have something to deal with, my guys. Oh, somehow I don't think this is gonna be relevant either. Yeah, but, uh, I don't think so. Well, tap five. The boy is back. Yep, yep. Okay, I figured that was probably what was coming. Uh, then we'll tap one. For Marrow's the Twister. Okay. Now this Corile will run into the Sniper Mosquito. Yep, so we both die. There's some logic. Or no, I can only attack with one. I'm attacking. Yeah, yeah, you just have a no. vehicle. Okay. So for some reason, I was thinking two of my guys could attack. I'm just gonna do the same play as last time and see if you've got a third Corile for me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, before I draw, I don't have the third Corile. Okay, it's not a core aisle, but that's not bad. I don't think Emerald is going to help you very soon. One, two, so, three. Play Aqua Hulkus. Sure. And we'll spiral gate your burning main. Sure. Um, My deck can only hold off other aggressive decks for so long. I think we've got to try and close the game. Oh, so Aqua Vehicle will hit a shield. Okay, let's peek. Yep, that's good. And then Corile will hit a second shield. I think the only punish is like if I hit natural snare and give you a bar quip or something, and then I'm just really sad. Um I am going to awaken my mana nexus. Mana Nexus, okay. So I'm gonna put natural snare into my shields. Alright. So it's number six, right? Yeah, it's number six. And uh, th that's all my guys that can attack, so you can go now. I'll play the Burning Main to mana. I'll tap three for Bronze Arm Tribe. And it is the Gigamantis that goes to mana. And then one for Sniper Indeed. Mosquito again. All right. 
go ahead. Probably have to. Oh, you you have one card in hand, and I think I actually know what it is. I think it's Mana Nexus. Oh, you have one natural snare in your shield. I do have a natural snare in my shields. Thank you, Mana Nexus, for coming in clutch. You have just three in hand, so I'm curious to see what you can do. Run out another Aqua Hocus. Okay. Then. What am I more scared of? Am I more scared of Barquip the Smasher, or am I more scared of Giga Mantis? <laughs> Did you ever think you were going to be saying that to yourself going into this game? I, I actually, I was thinking you might run a Bark Whip deck. I was not expecting Giga Mantis. So like, w one of the other decks I was thinking of was just version two of what I ran last week. I was literally running Wailing Shadow Belbet Flow because my deck had no other good way to deal with Bark Whip. Oh my god. But uh, I, I, I guess we can run this out to keep it not so mysterious. So we're playing Spiral Gate. Yeah, yeah. I figured I that had I don't, to be coming. I don't know what we're targeting. But like the fear is that whatever I give you, you can Evo immediately up. Yeah, I yeah. I think you you probably got the playset of Barquip, but you probably only have like one or two Gigamit. So I guess you actually bounce the Sniper Mosquito. Yep, Sniper Mosquito um, is bounced. Now, and your deck has literally no way to stop my game plan other than shield triggers. This game is just so funny to me. Ugh, who knows if I'm overthinking things here. Um, so, like, the calculation I'm running is I want to make sure I can kill you next turn while giving you as few resources as possible. Yeah. Which is somewhat of a tricky endeavor, but, uh... Because if you, if you do hit shields and stuff, it's still possible that you could give me Burning Mane into Bark Whip. Or I mean, give yeah, me the Giga Mantis. <laughs> And there is a dimension gate down there in my I'm, I'm thinking about that too, yeah. I, I mean, I can't play around everything. I think I have to yeah, swing yeah. at least. You have some. to. Yeah, so, some decision. The question has to is be like, made. do I minimum swing or do I. Or like, do you maximum YOLO? Well, maximum YOLO is bad because Natural Snare is in your shield and yeah, it yeah. you the game. <laughs> so that that's pretty dumb. Big brain plays. We will swing at one shield with Core Isle. All right, I will peek, and I will add it to my hand. All right, and that's it from me. You can go ahead. Okay. You haven't just slammed something down, which tells me no. you can't win the I, game. I can't win the game right here. Okay, so if I it, have If I did, I, yeah, I would have slammed it down instantly. But we have to think it through, because I have the feeling I'm getting Crystal Lancered next turn, which will be a double breaker. And double breakers are a little scary when you're having very few shields. I mean, okay. Well, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you would theoretically have enough mana to both Crystal Lancer and Spiral Gate, which I kind of don't like that, but it's possible. You already used three Spiral Gates though, so my, my odds are not horrible. So I think the only thing that makes sense is yeah it, it has to just be this play that to mana tap so one that i didn't pull rumbling terra horn by the way I, I yeah he's so good and then we gotta go so what what i was debating about is like should i should i play the mana nexus or should i play it into my mana zone and like see if i have another mana nexus exactly. in the shields and then i could cycle it to live longer but I think it just makes more sense to just play the Mana Nexus. I don't know why it just disappeared from the field instantaneously, but I played the Mana Nexus. And I'm going to put the Dimension Gate as a shield. And then I'm going to swing with the Bronze Arm Tribe. Oh, block. Yeah, of course you will. And I'll end of the turn. Actually a screw up by me, I think. Yeah, so I, I forgot you had Mana Nexus. And like, so now because you have Natural Snare, I don't have Lethal. Yeah. But, uh, I think we still have a line we- You have three um, cards. Yeah. Makes me feel like you've got something, but I felt like I was best okay. off with, uh... So we're, we're forced into this line here. Yeah, so yeah, we'll I, four I, Oh my god! This, so. You got a core aisles every time! Uh, Alright, so, so my other play wouldn't have changed there, so that's fine. So, shield six is the natural snare, and seven is the dimension game, right? Yep. Okay, so... Well, maybe we can just 
like no i i know what you're drawing and i know what's in your hand because i bounced it with spiral gate so i know next turn you can only run out burning main and sniper mosquito so i guess the question uh, is the, like are if the i burning main is now, in the mana zone it, you played that one earlier didn't you i mean uh, uh, okay unless the burning main somehow ended up in my deck i can tell you the card in my hand <laughs> yeah. is not a burning main yeah, well i don't know how that i'm happened. pretty sure it was it went to the mana because oh, i no. I took something back with Sniper Mosquito, and then I played that as mana to do something else. I think to play the Bronze Arm into the Sniper Mosquito. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, oh, I played the no. Burning Main as mana to do the Bronze Arm Sniper. I don't know what's in your hand. It, it, it's probably not a Gigamantis, right? So that that <laughs> Could still be anything. Means, so, and even if it is Gigamantis, you don't have enough mana to evo it. Like I do know you're drawing Sniper Mosquito. I guess it, it doesn't change that you can't kill me, right? So like, if I swing now, it's am I more likely to... Like, is your, are your shields more likely to have something that saves you from dying or that gives you the tools to... Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a weird situation. I, I think... Oh, if, if you had Bark Whip, you wouldn't have suicided the Marrow who's the Twister into that. You would have just evoed and kept the Bark Whip. I think you have Bark Whip, but you could have a Beast Folk, and I, like, give you the Bark Whip. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you're also on Mana Nexus. <laughs> I, I think you only have one Root Trap. Maybe you have two. I, I think I think the right play is just a pass here, so you can go ahead. All right, you have two in hand. I might get punished by another Mana Nexus. Yeah. I, I do think this is the right call. So I can just assume that you're holding a Crystal Lancer. I, I am, in fact. I, I don't know what gave it away. <laughs> Which is going to cost six of your mana. I'm guessing, like, you're out of other stuff. I feel like if I put something on board, you're kind of just committing to trying to win anyways. Like, on your turn. I mean, I feel like no matter what I put on board, you're going to be going for lethal. It's surprised you can't just run out both of them in a deck like this, honestly. Uh, yeah, not quite. Not quite. This is one of those times where, like, this decision, like... It probably doesn't matter because I just need the shields anyways, oh, and if I, I have the shields, I probably win. But I feel like if I do it wrong and then it comes back to bite me, I'll just be mad that I didn't like right, spend the minute right. to think it through. We're gonna play Raging Dash I Horn to mana. About this card. That's not a bad one. And then I'm gonna play the Sniper Mosquito. Yeah, I see what you were talking about with that. I think this probably is the right play. I figured uh, like it. Usually, I like put, putting the bigger thing on board because stuff like uh, you couldn't searing wave it or whatever. But if you're playing a water where you, the most likely thing is you give me bounce, this way in the event that I do have the extra mana nexus in the shields and the gigamantis, I can at least like one bang it on my next turn. Right, right, yeah. Well, I will say, so the fact that I just drew Mero Ooze the Twister is something that I like. Yeah, that helps a lot. But, uh, so we'll run him out, and then we'll tap the rest of our men. Okay. And there it is, so Crystal Lancer. Evo. Now, I think... Like, I, I think Mana Nexus is what saves you, so actually, I think we want to, like, give you as few stuff as possible, right? So let's swing, I guess, with Aqua Vehicle into Shield 4. Into Shield 4, Aqua Vehicle. I will peek. I will add it to my hand. Okay, so then Aqua Hulkus will swing into Shield 5. Okay, gotta have the Mana Nexus. I guess it comes down to if I have it or I don't have it, right? So let's just flip it over and see what happens. Yes! <laughs> okay, so now we're free to go in on the last two and the... Yeah. One is a natural snare. But... The natural snare and the Dimension Gate. So you got it, you got game oh one. Oh my gosh! And, oh, I guess I should have said I was going first, but... I'm, I'm, I'm willing to trust you on this one. I don't think your deck wants to be going second anytime soon. I, I'm going to put the Dimension Gate to Mana Zone and end my turn. All right, no Sniper Mosquito. I, I like to see that. I, I'm a little disappointed about it, I won't lie. Okay, so we will draw... Uh, we'll just... Throw Illusionary Merfolk mana and end my turn. Okay, that's and the that's a card purchase. draw not as relevant as I was hoping. Although the, those Aqua Hulkuses came in handy, actually. I'll put the Sword Butterfly to mana, and I'm gonna play a Poisonous Mushroom. 
right. But I want to think about what I'm charging. No, I don't have to think about that. I'm going to charge that. Go. <laughs> I'm an right. idiot. <laughs> we'll send Emerald a mana. Because yep. I like the first one so much. We'll play Emerald. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to be yeah. like, yeah, who needs an em who needs like the Emerald Merfolk combo when you're getting rushed down? <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. But uh, right. we, we set first yep. in this game, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, choose, choose a card from your hand to your shields. Okay, so we'll put that as shield number six, and we'll pull up shield number one. And I guess to clarify for any viewers, I cannot use the shield trigger ability of this. Right. Yep, which no is also on the triggers. text of the card. God, you know how Actually, busted that would be if relevant. you could? That, that's the same thing with that Dark Lord card I sent him last game also. And, oh what? yeah, that would be stupid busted, especially in multiples, because like play emerald and then play another one and just pick the shield trigger back up and just oh cast yeah it immediately that's all i got you can go ahead I, I will draw i'm gonna skip playing mana because i will bronze arm tribe and, and a nice mana neck this end of the mana zone and i will okay. sniper mosquito now i'm in a conundrum but you know what i feel like this is the right play I don't want to leave that shield, like, assuming it's a terror pit, it's a late game in the event that I have something better than a poisonous mushroom on board. So I'm going to hit the new shield that you placed with Emerald. Awaken. Yes, okay. Uh, That's what yeah. I thought. Like, get the terror pit out of the way now so rather than later. We'll hit the... You want to kill the poisonous this mushroom that's tapped, right? I think we're going to kill the sniper mosquito, actually. Yep. Sniper mosquito goes to the graveyard. Yes, so... All right, and then it's your go. All right. This is a hand, all right. It's five cards. That's a lot of cards. It could be any number of terrifying things. Okay, so we'll send another illusionary. Oh my purple. god! I will note. I have. I guess the terror pit, but I've revealed two cyber lords and ter two merfolks. Now we will run out. Uh, Hyper Squid Walter, yet another yep, yep. cyber lord, <laughs> and uh, Emerald will go into the poisonous mushroom. Yeah. I think. You're definitely the aggressor in this matchup, even though this is a pretty aggressive deck I'm on also. Yeah, I think so too. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Certainly the play is to get that to mana and just get out my Deathblade He's Beetle. Okay. I respect <laughs> it. It's powerful. And you know what? I'm just, I'm going swinging. I don't even care. I'm going in. Send to hand or move to hand, yes. Okay, you can go ahead. Man, you are you are you scared of Deathblade Beetle? Uh a little <laughs> bit, but also I mean it's just a vanilla, right? I mean it's power attacker. Double breaker. Oh well, yeah, that yeah, I I knew the double breaker. It's strong. It, I think of anything that is just like stats and double breaker, I think of that. Noah. Yeah, yeah. Figured I could get him out you, here in one turn. We've got before another you interesting out. choice here. Like, do I? What do I send to mana and what do I play? I think. I think we just do. This. Oh and my yet god! Another How many mana. cyber lords do you have? Uh, and then we'll run out aqua vehicle. Yep. Uh, Hyper squid Walter will suicide into the bronze. And I will draw a card off yeah. Walter's effect. And this also dies. And you yep. could go ahead. I get the feeling in my future, I'm going to either be seeing an evil on that aqua vehicle to take out Deathblade Beetle or a Core Isle. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm fully committed at this point. You have a four card hand. I don't care. I'm <laughs> double breaking. Get my value four while I can. Three. Uh, four three, yeah. Th this one's good. This one we're going to use and it's a spiral gate but okay. i'm not actually sure what i want it i i think yeah okay i think this is a play i think we bounce the sniper mosquito here interesting okay sniper mosquito is returned to my uh, hand uh, anyways my turn right yeah okay. i get the feeling you're oh. probably gonna core isle the deathblade beetle or you're gonna not, evo not into exactly. you're gonna evo yeah. into crystal paladin. Yeah, you've got it now. I'm really sad this card isn't very good in this matchup. By the way, I was yeah. so happy running this. It's kind of horrible. Got searing wave also. Searing wave also. But uh, yeah. Anyways, so okay. So first we'll have 
four men, I hear. Yep, yep, I knew this was coming. Evo this into Crystal Paladin. Yep. Then we'll tap one mana to run out Marrow Ooze the Twister. Ye Ooh, okay, then okay. Crystal Paladin will just kill the Death Blade Beetle, and then you can go ahead. That's an interesting one. Oh! And so that's... Like, Spiral Gating the five mana would have made sense, but like... And just kill that. So yeah, I, if you can I get it know. out. Get it out when you can. I'm just gonna like do this, I guess. Yeah, the, the, uh, that was the problem with this. Cause now you can play two cards. Yeah, go ahead. Wrong. And I could have played almost any other second card too. Oh, uh, five the core aisle. Core yeah, aisle. With all those cards in your hand, I knew you had to have one. I think attacking is not right here. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> right. Just gonna resummon my sniper. Wait, 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 wait. Don't do anything yet. Hold on. I'm an idiot. I can attack. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. because I, right. I, I, I'm thinking with sniper mosquito, I have a guaranteed I can get a card to my hand and actually do something, while also either killing your marrow ooze or putting you to no shields, which actually is probably not bad. I'm assuming you'll have an answer to the other sniper mosquito on board. So I'd like to just get something else out there. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Sniper Mosquito. And I'm gonna swing for your shield. Taking back Bronze Arm Tribe. Alright. Uh, yeah, we'll take it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Alright. I feel like this way, draw. it makes it so you have to have more removal. Or hit more shields to make you I'll, do something. We'll charge mana. Yeah, Believe that's not me. gonna do any if good you for you. If you thought uh, three emeralds, one hyper squid Walter, and one Coral was the end of the the cyber war, no, rampage, okay, we're mistaken. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Get it's that back. out of here. Okay, so Crystal Paladin is killing. Yeah, obviously. Yep. Now this this is an interesting one, and it's <laughs> wild why this is an interesting oh, one. Oh, I I completely agree. There's like a, any number of cards that if you hit it can give me like a swing at your at you for game. Yeah. Okay. So you have Bronze Arm Tribe in your hand. Right? Yeah, and I'm drawing um, into Sniper Mosquito. Yeah. So like, I I don't think no matter what I hit, you can't kill me this turn if I only hit one shield. Well, because you 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 need to remove my blocker and you need to evo something. To kill right. Me next but, turn. But what if you attacked with the marrow ooze and killed it? Well, I'm I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> oh darn. Um, okay. Uh, w one of these coriles can attack, so coriles yep. is just gonna hit shield one, and then I guess I've already uh, revealed yeah. I don't plan on following up with another attack. Oh, I mean, I knew I you probably were. wouldn't have expected that anyways. But it, okay, so that was good. All right, then finished, of course. Yeah. Okay. I will draw. It's kind of a weird, funny one, but I'll, I'll pay three for the Bronze Arm Tribe, and then I'll pay one for the Sniper Mosquito, and then I'll pay one for the other Sniper Mosquito. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Funny how that worked out. Now, are you ready, Ben, for my turn? Oh, wait. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you wouldn't. Saucerhead Shark? I, I didn't pull saucer head shark. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay, okay. I that would have just been so funny. I set up my board, and you like need to get rid of everything, and you just bounce okay. it all. Uh, unbelievably, we have another <laughs> coral, and just for the heck of it, I'll throw out the fourth one because it, it's not even going to be yeah, relevant. Yeah. Right, we, right. We this just comes down to the crystal laser, board. right? Um, or like I feel like not, I have so not, much stuff. Not no. exactly. Not exactly. Dude. Okay. Right. We're gonna pay. Four mana here. Do you, do you know what card I'm playing? Unicorn fish? No, we're I... gonna play snake attack here. Oh no! Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, yep. That's that's a all, thing. All my guys are double breakers now, so I don't think yeah, the order okay. matters. Coral hit two shields. Yeah. Nana Nexus is a pain, and I think they win you the game. Right, so do you want to hit... You gotta pick your shields. Which ones are we hitting? Two and three. Okay. I was thinking to myself, and it doesn't matter because it doesn't change my plays at all. You either right, got right. it or you, you, you have don't. You have to. Alright, I don't like it, but I'll take them to my hand. Right, uh, Coral hit the last two. Give me... 
Man, a nexus. No! Yes. No, there was no nexus. <laughs> Dang it. For game. Yes. Mono nature beats couldn't handle the, the core aisles. Oh, this, this game... This was like the weirdest draw I could have possibly imagined with this deck. Dude, you had all the Cyber Lords. Every last one of them. I literally pulled every Cyber Lord in my deck. Cause I actually only pulled three Emerald. I didn't pull the full four. Oh, really? Okay. But yeah, so so I drew all four of my Core Isles, all three of my Emeralds, and my one Hyper Squid Walter. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. So when I was building this deck... This was like a snake attack deck. That was the build around card. In yeah. game one, I like didn't even see it at all, which was upsetting. Yeah, I I completely forgot about it. I'm not even gonna lie. I wasn't even thinking about it. So I was thinking my board felt pretty decent. I, I mean, so I did also have Crystal Lancer. Yeah, which that's was that's what I was thinking. Without triggers, also. But well, I was thinking that like, Crystal Lancer breaks too, and then like if I have one mana Nexus, I'm fine because I had the other in my mana. I, I forgot snake attack was a thing and like I knew you mentioned it last week so I should have thought maybe you were on it especially when I saw the barrow ooze the twister dude low key the the high rolls on this deck are actually insane you could go like turn one marrow ooze turn two any random two drop turn three any random three drop and then just win the game when I snake yeah attack. oh I could imagine and then you like, also obviously have, like... like that's you're not relying on that right Right, right, because you have so much, like, with the merfolks and core isles and everything, it's enough to, like, control yeah. the board for the most part and, like, get stuff going. Yeah, no, so he here's the deck here. I only pulled one Aqua Soldier also, which I, I would have been running a oh, lot geez. more of because it's good into Searing Wave also. Yeah. The way I thought I was going to win these matchups was just keep you off closing the game until I can just play Snake Attack and win in one turn. Game one, I did play like a bit more controlling of a game just because of how I drew, but like I was only really concerned against f about finding finishers against control. And like with just Aqua Soldier, you actually can't permanently deal with Aqua Soldier, right? Yeah, yeah. I that's the the big problem with this whole deck that I was playing is that I just don't have hard removal. I have to just win the game before it becomes relevant, <laughs> or. Uh, right. <laughs> use like my beaters but i just because of you playing a more aggressive deck i never really got the chance to show off like the raging dash horns the earth stomp giants yeah, no or... raging dash horn it's a good card briefly thought about like cause i i have a death blade beetle also and i was like hmm, raging dash horn death blade beetle i think i might have pulled earth stomp giant also really. Yeah, when I pulled the two Earth Stomp Giants, I knew what I had. Like, my destiny was in front of me. <laughs> I'm just I, amazed you're running Giga Mantis, though. I think I literally called that out as worthless in my... Uh... <laughs> it, it actually works fairly well in this deck, because a, yeah. a lot of times I end up... Because of Sniper Mosquito, I take stuff back from my mana. So it lets me re recycle it and reuse it. I would say in my deck, though, it's like the least important card, probably. <laughs> I did test around with a variant that was like this... But the difference was, what, what did I take out? I think I took out, like, all the mana nexus and just, like, a couple other things here and there. Like, I think one poisonous mushroom, a burning mane, and, like, a sword butterfly or something. And just, like, a playset of uh, Searing Wave and a playset of Rumble Gate. And the idea <laughs> was that I would just not play them to mana so my Raging Dash Horns would stay strong. Oh, or I see. Or I would ha play it to mana, use it attack with the sniper mosquito to take it out and then use the raging dash horn oh that that's pretty cool actually I didn't or it, like it do that. it and then mana nexus it out or like it, i had so right, much ways right. to manipulate the mana that i figured i could get away with yeah. it but then it was just too many dead cards too often that i felt this yeah. was more consistent uh, I, I i had an earlier version of this build that was running nature also I, so i was running like bronze arm tribe and elf X basically oh i i somehow got a play set of elf x dude and i insane. i tested it in this deck but it always just went to the mana zone because everything I, else I was better i can see that with this deck let's say so like this deck like runs out of gas whereas my oh really yeah yeah doesn't. like in your deck there when you're like drawing cards and you have merfolk it could be insane 
Yeah, and, and so like th that was the reasoning there, and I I was also running Mana Nexus too, but like trying to run this as three colors, it seemed like my draws yeah. were just too clunky, and so yeah, I, I eventually to... just went with this more streamlined. Yeah, I I think it paid off I've for sure. Here. I actually think this deck here would be not as bad if I had like play sets of everything, so I could like bump up the Rumbling Terra Horns. And then like maybe take out oh, some of the yeah. like I don't need the Deathblade Beetle, and then right. maybe get like more uh, natural snare in there, and I think it'd be a lot more consistent. <laughs> I just don't have the removal. Yeah, four natural snare would help this a lot. Well, next set we're looking at Shadow Clash of Blinding Light, which I think it introduces way more useful things because we're gonna but finally we get shield say... trigger creatures. Depending on how I pull, I've got an absolutely wild deck theory crafting. <laughs> really? I, I'm excited to see it. I I have some there, stuff in the works. There's a ton of wild stuff you could do with the next set if you had the desire. I'm not sure how much of it is good. It, it depends but... on how the pulls go. Because, like, depending on what, like, high roller stuff you get, you could definitely pull some really weird stuff. Yeah. Like, like Balooms and Alcideus. Like, that could be yeah. a game changer to get those. <laughs> How are you going to sure. deal with Alcideus in, like, this limited format? Hope you don't draw it, basically. <laughs> but, I mean, but outside of that, just, like, the shield trigger creatures in general are... Or, they change the meta trigger, a lot. Yeah, I guess they are. All right, well, I'm I'm excited to see what I pull. We'll just call the episode here. It's two, yeah, it's sure. two to one now. I'm down. Michael, you, you have the, the edge. But I'm coming for you next time. I'm not going to play a troll deck because Shadow Clash actually has good stuff in it, and I want to get that prize. <laughs> Indeed. That, that's a fair, a fair point. But I hope just like it, it was fun seeing these weird decks go at it, because I, I certainly I'm had so fun. I'm so glad I made the decision to play this and not another yeah. troll deck. Yeah, it, it would have been fun. Wild. All right, well, we'll catch you guys next week. Shadow Clash of Blinding Light. Be there or be square. Peace. Peace.